Grace and peace, everybody. This is Pastor Nate. And again, you're joining us for week or episode 13 of Bridging the Gap. And today I have a special guest, a friend, and you are going to love him. His, his personality is infectious. You're just going to enjoy this man. Has many stories to tell. So what better place to bring you in here to, Nate, this podcast, Bridging the Gap. So today, to my viewers, I want to introduce you to the audience for the first time, Pastor Robin Wood. He currently lives in Muncie, Indiana, actually probably Yorktown, Yorktown I believe. Right. Yeah, and he's a part of Union Chapel. Now, I met Robin for the first time, I believe, five years ago in a meeting with me and him and Pastor Keith O'Neill. And ever since, this guy has left a huge impact <laughs> on me with his out loud personality <laughs> and zeal and excitement for planning churches across the United States of America. Welcome the people, Robin Wood. If you will. How are you, Nate? How you doing, Robin? Very good, very good. It's my pleasure to have you. I'm excited <laughs> about joy. this. My joy to be here. Me and Mark Slusher, who runs this particular podcast, we talked about it. He said, hey, you need to bring up Robin Wood sometime. <laughs> I said, can we get it in 30 minutes? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But we're going to make it happen <laughs> today. So I, I appreciate you coming and taking the time <laughs> out of your busy schedule to come and just right. grace us with your presence. So today I just want you to give a little insight. Today we're just going to talk about you. Okay. Always usually start off with an episode okay. for people to kind of introduce themselves, tell their story a little bit. So okay. give our viewers a little insight to your story and where it all began with your journey into ministry. Well, my journey in the ministry was really tied to my conversion story. Uh, even though I was raised in the church and kind of quit going as a teenager, and my dad was actually a music pastor. Okay. Uh, that's a fun story because I made a deal with my mother to work in the nursery, not to embarrass my dad when I wanted to quit coming to church. <laughs> so I didn't go the last two years of my high school uh, uh, life uh, to a church, but I did go work in the nursery and I've always loved kids because of that. Uh, but then I came to Anderson College uh, on a basketball scholarship at the time and also played golf at Anderson College, now known as Anderson University. Mm -hmm. It was called the Hoosier Buckeye Conference. And, uh, and I was really far from God. Didn't want to be in church. Uh, didn't want to be a part of that, but had made that deal with my mom. And so Mother's Day coming up is special to me because my mother kind of was that negotiator. And I've lost both my parents now. My dad just died really a few months ago oh at 95 and had wow. a really great life. And uh, so we won't go into that. But, but what eventually happened was um, I came to Anderson College and kind of went every path you can go except a path with God. Mm. And the second semester of my freshman year, I still tell this story, they had a group called the God Squad. I, I like these guys because they're always praying for me, you know, mm -hmm. to quit swearing, to quit acting the way yeah. I was. And sometimes they'd pray for me out in the hallway, and I didn't like that. But one night, their guitar player got sick, and they found out I could play guitar. So they asked me to come, and here's my deal. I go, I'll play for your little sing-along thing, but when you start giving your testimonies, I'm out of there. Mm -hmm. But here's what happened. I heard a guy named Freeman Blade and Bucky Bookhart and David Knoll. These guys were basketball and football players. Eventually, um, Freeman Blade became a dear, dear friend and went on to play in the CBA and the NBA. They gave their testimonies that night, and I was going to slip out, but as I listened, I was so compelled. All of a sudden, I found myself up front kneeling my and weeping over my life and giving my life to Christ. And, and it literally, of course, transformed me forever. And uh, some, some radical things began to happen for Christ in my life. And, and I, didn't ever, I didn't go to youth group most of the time. I didn't go to church. But there was a youth pastor in our life for my sister and brother named Ken Mishler. Okay. And after I came to Christ my second semester, and I love telling this story because I was never first choice. Come on, just laugh out there if you've, <laughs> if you've never been first choice. So he asked a couple of smarter people and brighter people to be the youth pastor at the Eaton Church of God, just maybe 10, 15 minutes from here. And uh, they said no. And then he asked me, he'd heard about my conversion experience, and you know what? I simply said yes. Wow. I said yes, and I remember meeting with the board. Here's my fun story at the Eaton Church of God. Is uh, I met with them. They only had six kids in the youth group at the time. Church was about 70, 80 people. And I remember saying this to them, I don't think I can hurt you. I can only take you down to zero. Mm. <laughs> Come on, that's funny. <laughs> uh, but you know what? I'm not bragging when I tell you this. All glory to God. Mm -hmm. I led those six kids to Christ, of course, with God's help. And uh, this became the largest youth group in the Church of God movement yes, in God. Indiana. Wow. Yeah, and they had these uh, state youth conventions. We won the trophy a couple years. So I think we peaked wow. out one year at 176 kids. And uh, 
And so that's a big part of my story. And so this place means the world to me. I never thought I'd be living back in Indiana. Right. But now I'm at Union Chapel Church. Okay. And so that led me many different paths. We're going to talk later about me getting to plant a church in Phoenix. But it led me back here, and you won't believe this, but one of those six kids that I led to Christ was a cheerleader, and I met her when I was 56 years old, and we got married when I was 60. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and so it's a What Are the Odds? I wrote a book what called are What, the what, odds, what are the Odds story that this could ever happen. And I'll tell a little more later today about uh, Mark, who is filming this. He was one year old when I became the youth pastor. Wow. And on a bus route, uh, I invited his family to come to church, and they literally changed my life. His mom and dad, I love them so much. And uh, we've lost them now, yeah. but they're in heaven. I mean, yes, and we lost his dad this year. But here's the great news. Think of simple beginnings. Say yes. If God asks you to do something, if someone asks you to do something in ministry, I simply said yes, and God, God has done the rest. Praise God. Well, that being said, you, you was mentioning you were at Anderson, Anderson College at the time. At the time. A basketball standout uh, and a golf. Thank you. Well, I heard some stories, too. You're a tennis player, too. I right? play tennis, too. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. still rated uh, yeah, in, yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in those circles of 4.5 and 4.0 yeah. and all that. Yeah, but I, go ahead. I go hear ahead. you talk trash a lot to, <laughs> when he plays, right, so right, you know, that's, a, right. that's, a, that's a good quality that's awesome. to have. But with that being said, now, you said that when you went to this particular gathering, you said – you kind yeah. of felt the conviction, and you, you surrendered it all oh, over to the Lord. So absolutely. where did you, when did you start ex realizing there was a calling uh, in your life? Well, you know what? I, I said yes to that invitation to be a youth pastor. I don't know that I ever thought I'd okay. be a full-time minister. I remember telling the board that night, I'm a math major. I would love to teach school and be a basketball coach. That's what mm -hmm. I wanted to do, and even on the college level. And after a year, year and a half, two years, when God exploded this youth group, Pastor Mishler said... I think, I think God's calling you to the ministry. Now, he okay. didn't decide that for me, but he suggested that. And I prayed about it, and I changed my major okay. to Bible and, and Christian education. So that I, I, I graduated with a double major. I still okay. was a math major, but I, I graduated with a Bible major and, uh, and, and felt mm -hmm. called to the ministry. And really, I want to tell people, I felt called to the ministry by saying yes to opportunities, not by like just quietly filling that call and then, go, and then studying for it. I actually felt the call <laughs> and then studied to be prepared. Okay. So over, and I, I made a goal to get my master's of divinity by the time I was 40 years old. Wow. And I was 39 and a half when I got it from Fuller Seminary out in Phoenix, where I was planting a church. That's it. Now, now you was at Anderson for a while. And yep. How long was you at that church? Well, I was at Eaton Church of God for eight years. Oh yeah, Eaton. I'm sorry. And that's eight okay. Years. No, that's right. Eaton Church of God. And then I got a call to go to Casper, Wyoming. My heart really burned for evangelism, okay. and it was the only church at the time. I, be, I had become the youth pastor, the music pastor, the evangelism pastor, and the bus pastor, and somewhat the children's pastor. And I really needed to focus on evangelism mm -hmm. and all of those different ministries. I would find myself leading people to Christ. Right. And so that's a gift that God gives you, and you just, again, say sure. yes to that. And so I accepted a church in Casper, Wyoming, that allowed me just to be the evangelism pastor. Okay. And the joy of that church that led to church planting was we trained over 300 people to share their faith on a daily basis. Uh, some of you remember the phrase e evangelism explosion. Mm -hmm. uh, a layperson flew me to Florida, I met Dr. James Kennedy. In fact, he took me out on his team, and he tra he wrote that program, mm -hmm. and he taught me those two famous questions. You know, if you were to die tonight, do you know for certain you'd go to heaven? And the second question was, if, if you stood before God and he asked you, why should I let you into heaven, what would you say? Yeah. So that's kind of a qualifying question. The first one's a yes or no that you know for certain that you're a Christian. And uh, let me tell you something, those two questions trained over 300 people in five other churches, and we became a clinic base in Casper. They'd never had one out on the West Coast. They'd never had anything in the Rocky Mountain area. Mm -hmm. And we became a clinic-based church and trained over 100 churches. Wow. And, uh, and that, that, that formed my life that led someone to ask me to plant a church because of this passion for evangelism. Well, speaking speaking about planting churches, somebody may be watching right now saying, "Well, I've heard of church plants, I've heard of the statement." And right. So, so some of us are sitting here wondering, "What what is that all about? How did you even well, jump yeah, into that world?" Pe people had to be laughing as they watched this because every story I'm going to tell you, I'd never done anything I 
I got to do. Right, I right. said yes first, like to be a youth pastor. Okay. I'd never been a youth pastor. Then I said yes to be the evangelism pastor, and then we became a clinic-based church. And then, in fact, that church was running 90 people, and it mm-hmm. grew to over 700 people, and now runs over 2,000 people in wow. Casper, Wyoming. But in that setting, I was asked to plant a new church in Phoenix, Arizona. And once again, Nate, I said yes. I said I'll pray about it, and then they interviewed me and knew nothing about it. In fact, when I planted a church, there was only one conference in the Midwest that I went to over on the campus of Anderson College. There were over 800 people there that day, and out of that group, I, I was the one that said, yes, I'll go plant in Phoenix. Wow. And uh, so it's, it's an amazing story. I don't know when you want me to tell that particular story, <clears throat> but we started, I cast the vision to 90 church people, mm-hmm. so I'm going to make you church people laugh. I thought I had some influence, and don't worry, only six said yes. <laughs> so I had no charisma at all. Mm-hmm. I shared the past. Could we start in a school? We had no money, no people, no building. And so in 1987, I cast that vision on July 1 over a period of six weeks. And then we ran across a man who had written a program called The Phones for You. Mm-hmm. And these six people, along with a few helpers, made 23,000 phone calls to invite people to come to the first day of service. I'll never forget it. October 18th, 1987, 305 people walked into Pueblo Middle School. You know the joke. If you can start a church at a school with the initials PMS, you know God's (laughs) in it. Come on, that's funny. So we we just celebrated that day, and you know what? 13 people gave their life to Christ. And and we never looked back for 18 years. And God God grew that church to over 4,000 members. Now you're talking 4,000 members. You went went to the deserts of Arizona. (laughs) I got six. With six people, right, right. So so what was, was you you feeling God pulling you to Arizona? Or was it just something that they said? No, No, that has a story behind it. As as a child, I loved basketball, okay? Mm -hmm. And my hero, childhood hero, when I was in sixth grade, was a guy by the name of David Sebastian. And David was a point guard for the Middletown Middies, won a state championship. I snuck in and saw that state championship, and he was amazing. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Years later, he remembered me and said, Robin's the biggest risk taker. He saw me at the Grand Canyon. He tells Mm -hmm. this story. He saw me walk out where I shouldn't have been walking in sixth grade and looking over the edge of the Grand Canyon. He said, if he has enough courage to do that, he can start a church from nothing. And he literally called me while I was in Wyoming and said, would you consider planting a church? And here's the caveat. He said, would you pray about it for three years? Because I asked, how long would it be? And I just said, yes. Again, once again, that yes. Uh, And I thought, hey, I got three to four years to think about this. He went back and told someone in his church that I said yes and someone put up $100,000 to plant this church. I wish I could tell you that was my salary, but they paid me $20,000. Yeah, right. But we had that for four years, and I went there for wow. $20,000. I was at a church making forty. But you know what? I saw uh, Phoenix was the 10th largest city in the United States at that time, mm-hmm. and it became now the fifth largest city in the United States of wow. over 5 million people. So I went there, and uh, with God's help again, we, we found some strategies. We made those phone calls, and, and God did a, you know God did amazing sure. things. That's what you always have to say. I, I know he, he, he's grateful that we say yes, but mm-hmm. I mean, God does amazing miracles. Man, yeah, man. Well, yeah. you know, you've, you've experienced a lot just through college and through, and then through your journeys. I like your, 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 <laughs> the way of doing things. I say yes first. That's kind then, of it's been my story. Man, I, I mean, that's, yeah. a lot of people can't say yes to to saying, hey, can you preach next week? You know, he's like, I don't know. Let me pray about it. You know, <laughs> awesome. so the fact that you're, you're a yes, sir, I'll do it. And then that's God good. will that's kind of, That's provide. been my story. And I hope that, I hope that touches some people because I think many people have opportunities and they say, I'm not prepared or I don't have the education yet. Well, you can mm, get that. That's good. But if God moves in your heart, say yes. You know, which brings me up to why I'm preaching this week on Mother's Day, because a week ago, Pastor said, hey, I've preached 40 in a row. Would you do it? And I said, yes. Come on, that's fine. So I preach <laughs> right. next week by just well, saying yes. Deal. Okay. Good deal. And there's a plug for you. So uh, on Mother's <laughs> Day, uh, be at <laughs> Union Chapel to hear Pastor Robin Wood <laughs> deliver the awesome. good. Well, 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 that okay. being said, all the things that you've seen and witnessed, mm-hmm. I mean, there's so many. You said you're 67, is that correct? 67. So you've witnessed many things throughout mm-hmm. your 40 years plus of ministry. 
Uh, so give us an idea. What, what are some of the greatest memories that wow. you have seen or witnessed? Just give us a little bit of testimony. Well, this is a special day. I'm going to look down this way at the guy filming us. <laughs> I, I was given the job of being a bus minister. I was really the youth pastor. They had three empty buses at this church. And he said, you know, it's been a long time since we filled those buses. And I go, well, what do you do? They go, we would like you to go to the neighborhoods around the church here in Eaton, Indiana, knock on doors, meet families. If they have kids, tell them we'll pick them up for Sunday. And, you know, in in those days, people might remember the name Jack Hiles. He was up uh, near Chicago, I think Hammond, Indiana. And uh, he had like 100 buses or something. And people used to joke about he'd pick people up in three different states. (laughs) But uh, you know what? I I listened to one of those... uh, um, stories about him in Indiana, and I, and I, I know you're going to laugh. I said yes. Mm-hmm. So the reason it's so special to me, you want to know the miracle, I knocked on doors, and I met the Slusher family. And you know what? I, you know, I was young, playing college basketball. You know, I don't look in shape now, but was playing ball then, and they had a swimming pool. Mm-hmm. And so I'd go to their house. You know what? They'd invite me in for lunch, and, they, and I'd say, hey, can I jump in? No one told me I couldn't go barefoot and cut mm-hmm. off jeans and invite kids to church. And I remember jumping in that pool. I can picture it in your backyard, Mark. I remember jumping in that pool. He would have been one or two years old when mm-hmm. I did that. And Cindy was his sister. She was probably eight or nine. Mm-hmm. Eventually, she was in the youth group. I stayed eight years as a okay. youth pastor there and the bus pastor. And so we filled those three buses. You can put about 50 on a bus. And we had this children's ministry called uh, Junior Church. And uh, people like Kathy Green were amazing. She still lives in this area goes to Union Chapel, okay. so that's been spe- her and Tom. And so we still talk about that. The special kids like Mark and Cindy came, and his mom and dad gave their life to Christ. First his yeah. mom, his dad was kind of far from God like me, so I related to that. Mm-hmm. And then he came to Christ, and then these kids came to Christ, and lo and behold, what are the odds I would meet that cheerleader that I met when I was 19, she was 12, and then I met her again at 56, and, and we got married. And she found Union Chapel. But here's the good story there. The week before I left Eaton, Indiana at age 28 to move to Casper, Wyoming, I went to a unity service. So here's a miracle. And I met Pastor Greg Paris. He was only 27 years old. I was 28. And I met him one time. Think of this. One time. One time at age 28 and didn't meet him again until I was on the back row Mm. of a Christmas Eve service when I was 60 years old. Wow. And just got married. And I went there because of my wife had found that church. And he walked to that back row. He told me he never walks the crowd. That's not how he's mm-hmm. wired like me. And he saw me and called me by name and asked me to meet him at Red Lobster the first week in January wow. after that Christmas Eve service. And then he asked me, would I help him plant 10 churches? Wow. And I and I and I said yes. <laughs> and now we're we I think we planted like thirteen and wow. seven house churches in Kazakhstan. So altogether God's done an amazing thing. I've been involved in about eighty nine church plants and about eight house churches in in, in in the Soviet Union. Wow. And so it's been an amazing story from Belarus to Kazakhstan. It's just been amazing. Yeah. You think about the journey that we go through in our life, it, it's we can't take things for granted. People you right. run into will come back and they'll eventually be that blessing to you. Wow. And it's just amazing to see how your story with Greg, <laughs> Pastor Greg, and, and how it's, it's unbelievable. came full circle again. When people don't believe in miracles, right. I, I, and, and I can tell you bigger miracles, but that's huge. Yeah. That what, what are the odds that he'd walked that congregation that night? Look, I wasn't applying for a job. I was working for Feed the Children yeah. in Oklahoma City. In fact, wow. our first year of marriage, because I had a job, we lived apart. So wow. I was only home for that Christmas Eve service. Oh, wow. So if he doesn't walk that, that service that night, I didn't go there on a week-to-week basis. Yeah. I went back to Oklahoma City to work for Feed the Children. So, and, wow. and, and think of Mark now coming into yeah. my life, and he brings me back into his life. And that's why I know you. Exactly. Because he invites me to destiny. Yeah. And I come and love Bishop. You know, Bishop O'Neill is amazing. And, and, and Bishop was a worship leader for Pastor Even Greg Paris. So you, you see the orchestration of God through relationships. Yeah. And, and that's my life story is just yeah. people have changed my life. That's so awesome. what a privilege today to be with Mark 
and, and to know awesome. what a great leader he yeah. is yeah. Right. At, uh, at Destiny. When we think through life in, in general, I mean, I think about the situation here you mentioned with Mark. Mark's <laughs> always shared that story with me because <laughs> we have our little lunch group on Tuesdays, awesome. and he'd always tell me about the Robin Wood story. <laughs> and you <laughs> think Robin about Wood. it, though, if, if there was no Robin Wood that was willing to say wow. yes, then Mark Schlesher would not yeah. be at a Destiny Christian Center that yeah. we know of, yeah, or, his, or his family would have never introduced him to Christ at a young wow. man's age. Wow. So I think about this, and maybe that's the word for today, whoever's watching. Maybe you've been contemplating watching this and saying, man, you know, I'll do it maybe tomorrow, or I might do this. But I feel like God is just saying right now, just to say yes. Yeah. Say yes to what he's calling you to do because God's got a mighty plan for somebody that's watching. Right. I just feel right. that, and that's 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 inspiring to hear. Thank I know you. I know you're a doer, <laughs> and know, uh, yeah. we talk about yeah. personality assessments yeah. Yeah. over I know, the years. You know and, I do that, and I know that the ENFJs we get you get things done. <laughs> we do it, right. and it, we don't we don't push away. So awesome. I want to ask you a question. Now you mentioned about church planning, and we're, okay. we're gonna sh- this will be my last question for okay. you. And uh, but you've talked about church planting, churches, what you do for Union Chapel, and help them launch and other things in your ministry as well. But uh, where do you see yourself in this ministry, or where do you see Robin Wood in the next five years? Well, I tell you, the the greatest privilege of my life uh, was doing something that I didn't know how to do it, but I also saw it as the greatest chance. Uh, When I understood what church planting was, it's like starting without church people, Mm -hmm. actually. In fact, we're doing that more and more without any Christians on our core team. Going to an area... Gathering people to have an openness to God. If you read the book of Acts, one of my favorite phrases is, the Apostle Paul would find God-fearers. That just meant they loved God. Remember he talked about the Bereans. They would search the scriptures daily Mm -hmm. to see if they were true. But they weren't followers of Christ yet. Mm -hmm. So he would find God-fearing people. and, and, And I consider Martha and Fred, Mark's parents. They had a respect for God and a love mm-hmm. for God. Yeah, yeah. And then we get to share the gospel in the greatest way. It's been declared through each other than one-on-one to lead someone to Jesus. Listen to me. Planting a church is the number way, number one way to reach people that are God-fearers mm-hmm. and that have not yet heard the whole message of Jesus yeah. and his life and death and resurrection on the cross. So I moved into that, and it became the, the greatest launching pad. And so now I get to find, now at my age, I get to find young, and you know I believe in you to plant a church someday, Mm -hmm. is God's given me an assessment tool to find people that have these characteristics to reach God-fearing people and to plant new churches. And so, and you know, I've been able to do 89 now, and and I've learned that in the places where we're not allowed to have churches, like Belarus and Kazakhstan, Mm -hmm. the fire is even more ignited. So the house churches can multiply, and and you don't get caught up in building a building, you don't get caught up in all the, you know, in the United States, we still have these big finances, how much it costs to get land, or Mm -hmm. eventually, even if you raise up a new church in a school, like I've done probably now 89 times, you finally have to build a building once you have a church in other countries where where that is not allowed now we get to focus totally on people and just simply share the message so that's become very exciting to me that i see my future uh, in planting different kinds of churches and it's all the body of christ my greatest story i just told you when i sat down i know we need to wrap up this session you've heard maybe of life without limbs mm-hmm. nick bullyzik Listen, this man's amazing. I met him a year and a half ago. He just brought me full time on his staff to plant churches in prisons. He's been in 225 prisons in the last three years. Mm -hmm. And he asked me, would I train these men who have come to Christ? They've even gotten their MDiv sometimes Mm -hmm. in in prison. They're going to be in for 20 years. Our little joke is you don't get to get rid of your pastor. I just get you to train you, you know. But can you picture this? I was just in two prisons in Florida last week near Jacksonville, and I trained four young prisoners, and they're going to raise up. They're already raising up the church, and they have 50, 60, and now I'm training them the same way to go into their influence Mm. and to bring these people into the body of Christ. Now, listen, I didn't know this was part of the deal. We went, and it was so effective that the chaplain invited Nick to come and do a big evangelism crusade in the yard. Now, we want that to happen. I did not know that was part of the... that They had to invite us to do that, Mm. but we were so effective with the the men we were training that they invited Nick to come this year. 
uh, to do like a yard event. It would be just like doing a big event like planting a church yeah. and then having an opening service. We're going to do that in two prisons in near Jacksonville. Wow. <laughs> is that awesome? That is exciting. <laughs> okay. you, know, you know, you think about the, the, the unfortunate part about prison ministry yeah. is these people are forgotten, abandoned, and yeah. rejected from, the, from today's society. But yet they're still out there and they need the Lord. They need help. Exactly. They need minister to. They exactly. need to understand because some of them are never going to get out. And so right. they need somebody right. to build them exactly. up spiritually, emotionally. Right. So praise God that you're doing something like I'm excited to see what God's going to do. Mm-hmm. I always ask this question okay. to my guests, okay. you know, that question about vision. And so okay. appreciate you sharing that wow. and taking your time with us this morning. And so I appreciate you watching. Now, now I hey, know. Now, Nathan, I'm going to say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I want them to contact you for this. Okay. If anyone feels compelled, they got that stirring inside to say yes. They contact you. You and I will we'll train them. Amen. So I'm not trying to make a pitch here, but that's that's what God's done. I've always said, whoever fills this call, uh, and my joke, you you know why you should hire me. I jokingly say because I'm the best. Come on, laugh. <laughs> but then I say, I'm also free. Come on, you got to yeah, hire right, someone right. that's free. It's the best. And uh, but you know what? God showed me. Don't you dare ever charge a church plant or anything. Mm. And so now He's opened this door so big. And God's provided. That's awesome. Is that awesome? That is so great. I hope they con- I hope someone contacts Amen. you. And I do says too. Yes. I do too. Yeah. Also, I know you 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 say you have many churches that are out right now that mm-hmm. they need support as well. Absolutely. Now, is there a way that some people maybe can get in contact with you to say, hey, I wanna I wanna be a blessing to this person that's having a ministry because you're in so many states. We'll go talk about that right. in our next. Well, that'd episode, be great. Right? We're not here, of course, to raise funds, but I have Robin Wood Ministries. It's Robin a five hundred one c three, and and all that money, hundred percent. And I got told you because I don't charge, goes out to church awesome. planters. And if they wanted to go through a, a maybe a larger church planting mm-hmm. organization, Union Chapel, Union Chapel. here in, in Muncie. Okay. If they would give to and, and put on their church plan, 100%. They don't keep That's any awesome. administrative costs, you know, and, and they That's send awesome. us to the prisons, and then we provide materials, books, Bibles, That's everything great. in the prisons. So if someone wanted to do that, again, it's not a fundraising podcast. Sure, sure, sure. But, yeah, th- those would be the two ways to yeah. contact through you, our yeah. two organizations. Make that happen. Also, I know um, – uh, the gentleman that you, what would you say his ministry was without limbs? Oh, life without limbs. Okay. And that's Nick Vujicic. Okay. okay? Yeah. And and I know uh, you can go find him online too. Oh, you, you can. can. Put People life without watching. limbs and he'll pull life right up. Limbs. You've probably seen him and don't even know it. You <laughs> oh, know, and all they all have. TV shows and you know, now. he, he may be, I would say he is the leading evangelist in the world today. He He's preached sure. over a billion people. My goodness. Was born without arms and he has one. One toe, he, he texts me every day. He doesn't do a voice text. Right. He texts me every day with that big toe, and I tell you, he's quicker than I am with all my fingers. And Nick, wow. I say, Nick, amazing. you amaze me. And listen, uh, uh, uh. I have one phrase I always use. I feel this about you and Mark. You're the real deal, mm-hmm. I say about Nick. Nick. Nick's no fanfare, even with all that he's been through, and, and, he's, and he's a big, big person out there for God. But listen, he's the real deal. That's he awesome. only wants people to come to Jesus. And his newest vision is to train a million oh, Christians God. to share their faith. That's a awesome. Million. Well, hey, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Bridging the Gap. I know I enjoyed it just listening to his testimony. Stay tuned next week, and I'll have my guest speaker again, Robin. We're going to talk about the state of the church as we go forward. So good day, God bless, as we go Bridge the Gap.